It's been my experience in Spain to get the bill sometimes you are like, I just want the bill. You will not get your huge American SUV to end them. It's very, very just let your boobs fly around the place. So today we are going to talk about 10 things that I think will be a huge culture shock for Americans if you are visiting Europe. Now here's the thing about America and Europe. We're both Western parts of the world. So there's a lot of things we have in common. However, there's a lot of things we don't. And as much as I talk a lot here about how I am shocked when I visit America by the differences in your culture and also Canada too, I think you guys should definitely check out Europe if you get an opportunity and you will see it is a little bit different. Our differences are what make things fun though. Okay, the first thing that always shocks me when I go to the States is that you guys have so much variety. Now, if you come to Europe, you might find yourself surprised by the lack of variety. You guys are used to having things right now and having a lot of choice when it comes to products and services. And yes, if you visit a big city like Dublin or Madrid or Malaga or Paris, you'll probably have a lot more choice than if you visit one of the counties or more rural states, as you would call them. It has been my experience in Europe since we got Amazon in. It has been a huge game changer for having things right here, right now. But oftentimes like people will say to me, oh, you just should go down to your local computer shop and get this thing. They won't have it. Like they don't have that much variety in all the little shops. So you do generally have to order things in. Whereas it's my experience in the States, you just go to one big Walmart or Target and they just have everything right there, right now. Also, you have a lot of specialized services that do like very specific niche things. Less so here, you'll find more, you'll get like, for example, in Spain, you'll have a handyman who does like a lot of different things in your house and repairs. Whereas in the United States, you'll have more specialized people in a compact area. The next thing you will definitely notice is the pace of dining. In the USA, I am always shocked by the fact that meals are fast. Like they want you in and out. Meals in Europe are longer and way more paced out and spaced out. Paced out or spaced out? In my opinion, a lot of this is driven by the tipping culture, which we're gonna get to. Servers here aren't motivated by tips. So they don't care about turning around a million tables. You will find yourself oftentimes sitting at a table looking for your person, your waiter, your waitress, and they're just like busy chatting or doing something else. But the idea isn't to be neglectful of your table. It's the fact that they think you're just there to enjoy your meal. In the US, it's very much like, here's your starter. Here's your main course. Here's your dessert. Here, like you could be waiting 20 minutes between courses. And it's been my experience in Spain to get the bill sometimes you are like, I just want the bill. But it's nice, like they expect you to have an entire experience when you are eating as opposed to just getting you in and out. Of course there is the tipping differences. That is definitely gonna come into shock because sometimes when I've just come back from America, it still takes me a minute to adjust because you have to tip for nearly everything in America. Not everything, but like anytime you're being served by somebody, especially in restaurants and stuff, the tipping culture is like huge. Whereas the way people are paid salaries here is very different. Now, I've been asked in comments before, is it seen as an insult to tip? No, it's never seen as an insult in most parts of Europe. I can't think of a part of Europe where somebody would be insulted if you tip. Like people will be thankful that you've tipped, but there are times, like I mentioned in a video a little while back when I went to Donegal, where somebody would kind of find it a little bit odd if you tipped. Like if somebody's just being nice and doing you a favor and then you hand them money, you might be seen as big timing them. Whereas I feel like in the States, it kind of would be like, yeah, give them a tip. Or it might've been a Patreon video. If you're interested in getting more behind the scenes videos of me doing adventures and stuff, then do check out patreon.com slash Jennings or join the little member button below. You can just click on that, it's real easy. You get buttons and badges and emojis and that helps me be able to make this channel my job. 
there are services that you would be expected to tip here like for example if you're getting your hair done if you're getting your beauty done in a salon it's nice to just tip a couple of quid here for me unless i'm having like some really big meal i wouldn't necessarily tip like if i'm just going for lunch but if i'm going for dinner i probably would tip like if we're sitting there for a couple of hours also if service charge is included that's another thing you have to weigh up like do you also want to tip on top of that another big difference is the drinking culture so in places like the uk and ireland i feel like the drinking culture is very different to places like france spain italy there is very much a binge drinking mentality in the uk and ireland whereas i have found in spain for example you will find people will have water and a drink i'm not saying it doesn't ever happen in the uk and ireland but the culture here is like you will have your regular drink and your alcoholic drink also younger people are entitled to have a glass of wine with dinner and it's not seen as like a binge drinking thing <laughs> as much as it is in ireland and the uk that being said it differs completely from the united states I feel like in the USA and Canada, you're a lot quicker to pick up on like if somebody has a drinking problem. Here, it's more so looked at as something that needs to be curbed. It's just a different mentality toward it. The next thing that is a big difference is shop closing times. So obviously Spain is a big one. There is still the siesta in most parts. Shops will be generally closed between 2 and 5 p.m. This is something that took me a lot of adjusting to, but actually now I really like it because I can go to the mall at like nine o'clock in the evening and go shopping for like an hour. But also in the USA, you have a lot more 24 hour stores. Like you can go shopping pretty much whatever you want. That is definitely not the case in most parts of Europe. We do have pharmacies that are like open 24 hours, but they're not everywhere and it's not as widespread as it is in the USA. Another thing that will shock you if you come here potentially is the fact that in the USA, I can pretty much rely on Google Maps or whatever app you use for maps very reliably. Like it will tell you block by block where to go. Because the roads aren't as uniform in parts of Europe, a lot of times they will not be so easy to follow Google Maps directions. And there are very often roads that are off the beaten track, as you would say, and they won't even be on Google's maps. Also, if you're just taking word of mouth directions when you're in America, it is very easy. People are like, go four blocks that way and then turn left and go seven blocks that way. And again, because we don't have blocks, it's more like go down there, you'll see a pub on your right then turn right at that and go about 100 yards down the street and you will see old Miriam and she's wearing a hat. She always sits on the corner. And what I'm saying is directions are just way more convoluted in Europe because they're just not as neat as they are in the US. Next up, transport. I mean, a lot of this goes without saying, but I think some of it would still come as a shock for you guys. In a lot of parts of Europe, you'll be driving on the other side of the road. Public transport is very accessible in a lot of cities in Europe, and it's the main way people get around. I, for example, don't drive a car at all. And that's because generally places I've lived are very accessible with public transport, and it would cost a lot more to run a car than it would to go on public transport. The cost of petrol in Europe, if you haven't heard, is like <sighs> at the moment. That's not the main reason I don't drive. I don't drive because I have like really bad anxiety around driving, but a lot of people in Europe as a way of life don't drive. Also, you might find it a shock that a lot of the roads are not well built. As I mentioned off the beaten track again, there can be very, very narrow roads and they are just not necessarily tarmacadam or whatever the equivalent is they're just like wild roads there's like rocks and mud and stuff and i guess you would be used to that if you live in a country town in america but a lot of times in a lot of counties in ireland for example there are just roads like that you will not get your huge american suv down them the next thing that i think could come as a huge culture shock for you is attitude toward nudity and modesty i come from ireland where it's pretty cold a lot of the time so there's not much reason to be taking off your clothes but when you come to like a more warm climate like spain portugal a lot of places 
People will often sunbathe topless and it's like totally fine. Kids run around in the nip and that's not like seen as anything strange. Also in a lot of Scandinavian countries, it's very normal to have saunas and things that are unisex and people can go totally nude in them. Even people go in with family members and stuff like that, which again, for me, I come from like quite a conservative country in that respect of Europe, but in other countries, like that is very normal. I feel like in America, there's this a little bit strange attitude as imposed by like your TV bands on nudity and things like that. Like nudity is seen as like, oh, <gasps> by the powers that be. Whereas in a lot of countries in Europe, it's very, very just let your boobs fly around the place. And it's not like a sexual thing. It's just, that's just like everybody has a body. And you have one too. Another big thing is personal space. Like personal space is very different in different parts of Europe. And I find people from Norway, like their personal space is like here. A lot of Scandinavian people, again, like they are very close to you and they don't realize. In America, you're way more like my personal space. I actually like that because I personally like to have personal space. But also in Spain, like people will stand nearly on top of you if you're in a line or a queue and you have to use the trolley or cart as you would call it to kind of be like, my space. <laughs> And the number one thing that I think would come as a culture shock to an American if they have never visited Europe before, and also Canadians as well, is the portion sizes. It's often said that Americans have huge portion sizes, but the difference is that European food will fill you up a lot faster. And we've been through it here on the channel before and talked about how there are like different laws for food, but that is the funniest thing. Like, you will have a very small amount of food in Europe and it will fill you up way more than like a huge amount of food would in the United States. We also have only really brought in taking a doggy bag home in maybe the last, I'd say decade here. It's definitely something we've adopted from the USA, the idea of a doggy bag. But a lot of times you really won't need one in Europe. Whereas when I'm in the States, yeah, you're like, that is wasteful. I need to take that home. And I think also that ties in what you guys have explained to me in comments before about portions, like a place will offer more than their competitor restaurant because people feel like they're getting more bang for their buck. So they offer like way more food and then you're like, oh, well, if I go to Tsumso restaurant, then I will know I'll have enough food for tomorrow as well because I always get a doggy bag. Anyway, if you like this video, let me know by liking, commenting, feed that algorithm monster. Shout out today to a couple of very special people. Today's shout out goes to my amazing squad tier. You guys are the heartbeat of my community and our monthly Skype hangouts are an absolute highlight for me. Thank you so much for the support and also the profound connection. Thank you so much, guys. That's it for today. See you on the other side. Bye.